Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Teman-teman semua Hari ini kita kedatangan tamu yang sangat istimewa dari Australia Beliau adalah Profesor dari Fakultas Sains dan Engineering Universitas uh, Sutton Cross di Australia So, Professor Amanda, welcome to our university well, Thank you so much for having me, I'm pleased to be here And good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Hello. Professor Amanda. <laughs> Thanks. So first, uh, we would like to say thank you very much for your time and then for your visits to our university. It's it's our honor for us, and you come to Sorong and then visit our university. So, Bapak, Ibu, jadi Professor Amanda ini. Um, ke Universitas Muhammadiyah Sorong dalam rangka melakukan uh, kolaborasi beberapa diantaranya itu tentang penandatanganan MOU, general lecture dan scientific writing so guys uh, Professor Amanda visit our university Muhammadiyah University to do a collaboration so we already did several uh, event that have been done such as uh, signing MOU between UNAMIN and Southern Cross University and also the general lecture on the Gen Z and then also scientific le lecture for lecturer and book launching on marine pollution, monitoring, mitigation and management. So this is the book. This is the book was written by Professor Amanda and her college. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting book. So before we go into the deep about this book, <laughs> so I'm also curious about this. So I would like to ask you about um, your childhood. Mm -hmm. So how do you spend your childhood? Mm. It was a long time ago, no? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I lived in a coastal town called Tweed Heads for most of the time I was young and I went to a primary school called South Tweed Primary School. Um, we travelled a lot also when I was young and one of the things I remember when I was growing up as a teenager is I used to get on my push bike, yeah. my bicycle oh. and used to ride to the beach mm -hmm. and meet my friends at the beach and um, we had a very beautiful surf coast so a lot of people surfing mm -hmm. a lot of people having fun in the ocean and then um, when i was in high school we were all worried about nuclear war mm -hmm. in 1980 and 1985 a long time ago so we used to talk as students and also as staff about the earth and the global environment and how do we keep it healthy and how do we stay safe. So that made me very interested in environmental science. Mm -hmm. So when I enrolled in environmental science to go to university, there was only two courses in all of Australia to study this because it was new mm -hmm. and different. And um, I'm so pleased I did that. It's been a career that's been so satisfying. <coughs> So you spend most of your time, I mean, in the coastal, actually. Yes, yes. So guys, you know, uh, in Australia, they have a great barrier reef. So a very huge and long reef mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. So so you did your bachelor, which university you did your bachelor? When I was 18, I was at university doing my Bachelor of Environmental Science with mm -hmm. a major in coastal management mm -hmm. at University of New England in Northern Rivers, which is um, the same campus where I work now, but it was a, called a different university name. And also in our third year, we had to do a big field trip, and that's when we went to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, one of my first times I was looking at the Great Barrier Reef as more than just a child, as someone who's learning about things. I was 20. You, you were 20 when you 
visit the Great Barrier Reef? When I visited as a student, but yes. I was there when I was a little girl. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you you know what's the difference Great Barrier Reef and the, in 20 years ago? Many more. Yes. And many more and then <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we went as tourists when I was young with my family, mm -hmm. but when I went when I was 20, it was for study and for learning. Oh, but, so a different reason to do yeah. the visit. Yeah. And then you did your master in chemistry, marine yes. chemistry from GCU, James Cook University. If anyone knows James Cook University, so James Cook University is in Australia also. And that was part of the reason um, I ended up at studying my master's at James Cook University is because it was um, part close by the Grace, Great Barrier Reef. Mm -hmm. So after third year and I finished my degree, I said I want to go and study more about the Barrier Reef. So that's when I did my master's. So <clears throat> why do you pick marine chemistry? I mean... Uh, so I think the environment is made up of very amazing and beautiful ecosystems, whether you're on the land, mm -hmm. whether you're on the estuary, halfway between land and water where the tide meets, or whether you're in the ocean itself. So to keep an ecosystem healthy, we have to manage the different impacts that we have as human beings on it. And water quality is one of them, and pollution and impacts associated with this on ecosystems is where you can connect chemistry mm -hmm. and biology and social science sometimes. Yeah. So I think I studied chemistry, but it made me a very good multidisciplinary researcher too. Yeah. And then you continue your PhD in Sutton Cross University, where do you do your work yeah. at the moment? Yes. In marine ecotoxicology. That's correct. So always marine ecotoxicology. So when I did my masters, I was looking at the impacts of dredging on dredging. coral reef. Mm -hmm. So when um, we're dredging sediments for to make the port and the canal, mm -hmm. um, it stirs the sediment up and you get high turbidity mm -hmm. and how does this affect corals? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't asking the question, how does it affect corals? I was looking at the chemistry, yeah. but my question I kept asking myself was how does it affect corals yeah so that's what made me want to do a PhD because I was looking at very interested in pollution impacts on corals okay so you I can say you love corals mm. a lot ah. <laughs> yes yes um teman-teman semua mungkin belum uh, yang belum tahu tentang coral karang in Indonesia we call karang jadi karang adalah tempat ikan-ikan uh, atau rumah bagi ikan yang kita konsumsi setiap hari so coral is a home for fish mm -hmm. we, we can say I mean in a simple word yes yeah. absolutely yeah huge biodiversity yeah. associated huge, with yeah. coral jadi yeah. banyak uh, sekali asal uh, Karang berasosiasi dengan beberapa uh, uh, beberapa organisme. Mm. So what we say with coral is that they're foundation species. So th those hard corals mm -hmm. build the ecosystem. They create the structure mm -hmm. that brings the fish, that brings the invertebrates. Mm -hmm. Without corals, you don't have coral reef. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then now we are in Sorong, West Papua. Yes. Where we have a, a best, the most beautiful and then high diversity for coral reef, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's my first time and I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. It's an amazing paradise that needs to be looked after mm -hmm. and cared for. Yeah. And then we just. We just um, visited Raja Ampat, where we can look at the di diversity 
choral and feast, and it's so amazing. And mm -hmm. what do you think? Can you give us your like, opinion about our places? Uh, well, you'll see the cover of my book, yes. right? It's yeah. very colorful. Yeah. Yes. And I love the bright colors, mm -hmm. but it is a signature of coral reef. If you think of a parrotfish, and yep. if you think of a nudie brank, or if you think of the corals, they're really beautiful colors. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the reefs around Raja Ampat, it looks like a very organized garden that nature made. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, I look and I like ask myself, what species are you? What species are you? Because it's so complex. Mm -hmm. And every time I go for a snorkel or do a dive, I see something new that I've never seen before. And it's like, makes my mind <laughs> explode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, guys, I just want to tell you that we are lucky people who lives in Indonesia, especially in Southwest Papua, because we have a beautiful place to go. We don't need to fly far away from Australia to enjoy the beautiful garden underwater. And then Prof. Amanda just uh, tell us about how impressed herself to see our biodiversity. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we mentioned also about the color of this wool. If I can say that Professor Amanda really loves to painting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then, you know, she is painting this cover. So, so as a scientist, as a researcher, we should have our own hobby, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. We say sometimes you must use the left side of your brain and you must use the right side of your brain. So yeah. left brain and right. Yeah, right. so we need to do numbers and mathematics mm -hmm. and problem solving. Mm -hmm. But if you exercise both sides of the brain, you become a better problem solver. Mm -hmm. You become more more complex in your thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think that's healthy. So if you like to play music or if you like to draw or paint or dance, mm -hmm. something that's co creative, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. It's very good for your brain. It's very healthy. Yeah. So don't stop. Don't stop. As long as we can keep balance. Keep the balance. Yeah. That's keep right. Keep the balance between <laughs> dancing and studying, dancing and painting. Isn't it? Yes, exactly. Like so. we we are going to have our career for a very real long time. Mm -hmm. You know, most of our adult lives we are going to be working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really important to like your job and enjoy your work and also find good things to do outside of work because it refreshes you and excites you to come back to work as well. So that's a good advice for <laughs> us. <laughs> so you will not get stress. <laughs> no, reduce stress. <laughs> so doing your hobbies and then also your job. Mm. And one thing that helps me do my hobbies is that I never watch television. Really? Yes. So if you think and you count how many hours a day mm -hmm. or a week maybe that you watch television, mm -hmm. I can paint for that time. Really? Yeah. So it's about sort of balancing your free time and making use of your free time. You have to have, you know, you might have family mm -hmm. and also to take responsibility for sure that's fine but find a little bit of time for yourself <laughs> me time yeah exactly <laughs> wow it's interesting i well personally i it's my first time to uh, hear that professor ramadan didn't watch television <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good for us uh, actually so don't spend most of your time in front screen yeah I mean, uh, scroll, scroll TikTok, scroll um, social media, and so you can do it in in a good way. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Not, yeah. So um, maybe for young generation, we sh we should have a um, uh, quality time for ourselves, for our family, 
not many time for like for social media yeah and social media is a really good tool for learning as well but try and spend some of the time that you spend on social media to do some learning yourself because there's many great tools available that were not available when I was young mm -hmm. and maybe not even when you were doing your undergraduate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so look at those resources that are available but also make sure that they're reputable resources. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of misinformation mm -hmm. that leads you down you know, the wrong, wrong angle. So mm -hmm. when you're focused on your study, you have to make sure that your information is correct and true. Yes. And it's very hard to do that on a big social media platform. Okay, so check and reset. Check yes. and recheck. Yes. Okay, so maybe we back, go back to this book. So I saw there are several um, people, person who was involved in this book, several scientists. And then how do you manage, I mean, how do you communicate? How do you get in one idea to mm. do to do this work? I mean, to publish this book. Yeah. Uh, well, there is a gap. There was a gap in textbooks. I was teaching marine pollution for many years, and the textbook that I was using hadn't been updated since two thousand and one. And there was a couple of other books that were not really how I wanted to teach. And I wanted to give my students a resource. So at one time, the publisher, Springer, was put out an invitation to write a textbook. And uh, I thought this was a good idea. And I signed a contract. And then I was a little bit... Um, overwhelmed because it's a very big job and I thought I need some help so I drew upon my colleagues who have expertise in in different areas that I didn't have deep expertise in and we um, I asked them to either co-write a chapter or sometimes write a chapter themselves mm -hmm. and it was during COVID, so I had this really amazing community mm -hmm. of researchers that I could communicate with, like through email, mostly through email, sometimes online and Zoom, but most of the time it was um, a really good place to be working because we were all stuck online, yeah, online, online. and it didn't matter that we were far away and in different parts of the world. and. Um, it was in really important to me to create the template. So the design of the book and the limitations of the chapter and page numbers and you will see in the book that there's text boxes with that dive into information deeper. So the structure I provided to all the authors that were writing chapters or I would just get information and I would sort of build the whole chapter myself or I just wrote some chapters myself as well. So have, giving good guidance was really important so people knew the boundaries and the expectation of the book. Um, and then you just have to rely on people to do it for you and that doesn't always work, right? There's no payment yeah. Yeah. or anything like that. So you have to rely on goodwill and if it doesn't work then you just have to go, okay, well that person's not ready and I'll find someone else. Yeah. But it is very rewarding because now all the team, all the people who helped write the book, we're all good friends now. And wow. um, we're a community. We've mm -hmm. done something very important yeah. and very special together. Mm -hmm. And maybe in five years' time, there's second edition. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. We're waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. So, wow, it sounds like a lot work to do in this yeah mm -hmm. I, and then also i read this book and you started writing this book from 2021 uh, yeah probably yes, 20, 20 2020 yeah, yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20. even earlier putting the plan together mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. yeah so it takes years 
you think maybe when you're writing a PhD, three or four years, right? Yeah. Um, so that's your own research and it's maybe three publications mm -hmm. for a PhD. Mm -hmm. And this is 16 chapters, mm -hmm. which are each a publication in their own yeah, right. It's sometimes new information, but a lot of the time it's bringing a lot of important information together. So probably for me, this was bigger than my PhD. Yeah. Yes, it is. This is so... <laughs> just, just because part of it is the collaboration, but it's also being able to manage and mm -hmm. lead the collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also um, just about creating a very good story mm -hmm. that is hopefully of interest mm -hmm. that keeps the student interested yeah. and engaged in the subject and the topic and wanting to learn more yeah, yeah. Um, learn more about marine marine pollution yes so who should treat this book do you think a uh, politician or well, people from uh, economic faculty or whatever. Yes, I have Ooh. written something in the back and I'll try and read it. Um, so it says here, uh, I think it might be in the, um, it might be in the pre phase, but it's important. I really highlight that. This book is for anyone that's interested in the marine environment. Mm -hmm. And you can dive in and take one chapter or you can take yeah. the whole 16 chapters. Mm -hmm. And chapter one is a nice introduction yes. just to get a good feel. Yeah, I just read two pages and then it's really yeah. nice and then well understand. And, um, the language is not really hard to understand for us, I mean, for me as a non-native speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So there is a chapter on law and legislation. So if you're a lawyer, it might be helpful for the interest in marine pollution. There's a chapter on restoration and rehabilitation. So mm -hmm. about working on solutions um, and mitigating um, pollution. Um, so that might interest people who are working in ecosystem mm -hmm. regeneration. There's many chapters on different types of pollutants. Mm -hmm. um, but even for community, if they want to learn a little bit more, just like you said, mm -hmm. it's easily easy enough to digest for um, someone who's not a student of yeah. marine science. Yes. But then it can go deeper, it goes mm -hmm. deeper where you can get more information. And another thing I say is every chapter has a big reference list, so there's many places to go and find more information. Yeah. yeah. So this book is for everyone who really interested in environment. Marine in environment. Marine, marine environment. Yeah. And you can also for like polit um, politician or law lawyer, you can read this book because it's, it's, there is a, um, policy yep. uh, in this book, management and also mitigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if we break it down in chapter one, we say um, it's important to remember that 80% of marine pollution comes from land. Mm -hmm. So it's how we manage our land, which affects the marine environment. and. Also, it's really important to remember that the only species on Earth that causes pollution is a human being. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Homo sapien, mm -hmm. right? Everything else in nature, there is no waste, right? We are the only species that make waste. Yeah. So we need things. to be responsible we, for our planet. Yes. yes, for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have to save our planet from, wa from waste. So we all, all of us have a responsibility in our planet. So what, we, what happened now? So it's just like a simple ex, um, like trash, trash means. So it's all 
our uh, responsible giver because we are human we produce a waste mm -hmm. wow Yep, everything we touch, everything we use, every piece of metal has come from the ground and yes. been processed and mm -hmm. we need to make sure we manage our finite resources mm -hmm. and um, ensure that we've got intergenerational equity. Mm -hmm. So our children and our children's children and our children's children's children yep. have a good, healthy planet to live on. Yeah. So... I think also we need um, more education, um, more knowledge about our environment. So people not only, I mean, environment not only learn by us, like environmental engineering or marine science or fisheries. So I thought people should know well about our marine, our river and everything mm. uh, related to environment. Yeah. And I think um, it's a really important point you make because to solve the problems that we've got, whether it's marine pollution or fisheries management, we actually, it's really important to work in teams. It's really yeah. important to draw upon the expertise of different disciplines mm -hmm. and to create multidisciplinary expertise mm -hmm. and help each other because we can't do it on our own. Yeah, so we need to work together, and it's part of the reason why I'm here yeah. in Sarong. Mm -hmm. So that's why you are here. To yeah, help us to improve our uh, our research, our understanding about um, about marine pollution, about our environment. So, yeah, I agree what you say. We have to encourage everyone to do um, connection between others. I mean, multidiscipline. So we can't do by ourselves. No. It's hard. Yeah. And we're only individuals, yeah? It's, it, we say one plus one is greater than two, two when you work with a team, or one plus one plus one is greater than three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no, the only reason why I'm here at Muhammadiyah University is wrong is because you're working here. And yeah. we <laughs> didn't mention yeah. that yeah. We, you were in Southern Cross University yeah, yeah. doing guys, some research. Yeah. In so guys, actually five years ago, I was in Southern Cross University and doing my uh, research uh, master thesis. And then uh, Professor Amanda is um, my supervisor at the time. Yes. And then actually, for, for sure, this is my one of my dream to invite you to come here and then discuss more about science, about everything in in Sorong. Yeah. So, so one of my dreams come true actually. Ah, right. <laughs> well, me too. I've yeah. always had a dream to come here. Yeah. And to see your beautiful coral. Mm -hmm. So you you know Raja Ampat before yeah. you met. Okay. <laughs> world famous. It's uh -huh. world famous. So yeah. everybody must maybe not now that our region, our uh, area, it's popular in the world. Mm -hmm. So we should now our uh, environment. Yeah. Okay. So actually, I really want to ask more questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we are running out of time. That uh, maybe the last question. Maybe um, what it. What do you think our campus, um, UNAMI, uh, UNAMI, we call, the short one we call UNAMI, mm -hmm. University of Muhammadiyah Soro. I mean, you are here for three days mm -hmm. and then you're having a chat with uh, some lecture and some of our students, you deliver a subject about scientific writing and then about the role of um, uh, national, re uh, the role of natural resource management. So. What is your, what do you think about our university yeah. after three days? Oh, yeah. I think the staff and the students are really nice and very keen and enthusiastic. And it's great to see. I mean, obviously, when students are at university, they're choosing to be here. And they're 
I, w I was amazed on Saturday last week when we had the general lecture with the yeah. students and everyone was there. It was so crowded and there's people sitting on the floor. And I love to present when people are interested to oh, hear. So and I look outside today and all the motorbikes and all the students on campus, like, don't be so concerned about the walls and the bricks and the mortar but what makes a place is the people and the and the staff's dedication to teaching the students the students are going to go off in their careers and university of Mohammedaya dear sorry sarong is going to have a contribution to make in the development of their career and it's it's great so you you'll get more facilities and you'll get you know over time that mm -hmm. happens all universities um develop their strengths over time that's fine but the energy and the enthusiasm from both the staff and the students make this place a very special place yeah so yeah i think um love love that energy yeah it's good thank you so much and would you like to come back to our campus just invite me and I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, for sure. We will invite you. Yeah. Probably next year. Yeah. If you have time, then we, we can continue our collaboration. So, yeah. Even we actually we started now to do a collaboration with Professor Amanda from uh, Southern Cross University. We will develop, develop uh, some projects. Yep. for the future for the future S sounds great and you never know maybe i have an opportunity where i bring some students yeah, from sure. australia and then the students then in Mahamadiya <laughs> can be work together and and you know some really good cultural exchange mm -hmm. as well because yeah. you know it, we're neighbors yes. australia yes. and indonesia are australia neighbors indonesia yeah is, is yeah so we love we we love that i mean we are really welcome you to come back with your student, with your colleagues to come to Universitas Muhammadiyah Soro. Yeah, thank you, no. It's been so, a pleasure being here. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for really nice uh, discuss for this afternoon. <laughs> and then we hope uh, next we will meet again and we, help, we will have a collaboration uh, between student and student and lecturer and lecturer between uh, uh, Southern Cross University and uh, University of Muhammadiyah Sorong. All right. Watch this space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, this is the end of our podcast. So, uh, we'll, we will see each other maybe next year. We don't know yet. Um, but thank you so much for your um, attention and then goodbye. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs>